For this week's studio project assignment, we will be focusing on color. Color is the element of art that is produced when light striking an object is reflected back to the eye. Some might say that color is a sensation, a human reaction to a hue arising in part from the optic nerve. Color is largely subjective and directly related to one's own perception and interpretation visually of that color, education, or exposure to what color is. Color can be integral to your design, to your artwork, and to the visual story you are trying to tell the viewer. Color theory is a course that dives deep into the multitudes of color and its use in design. Color theory focuses on the basics, the color wheel, primary, secondary, tertiary colors, color harmony, color symbolism, color schemes, color meanings, and color contexts. For this course, we will only scratch the surface of how color is used in artworks. For an in-depth study and further investigation, consider taking color design, which dives deeper into all things color. So first I'm gonna do color and shape where we're essentially creating a jigsaw puzzle of different colored paper, textured paper, and replicating an image that we found either off the internet or in a magazine. The second is to do color and line. And so we will again be using a reference image, a source image, either something that we found in a magazine or something we found online. We're gonna do a contour drawing of that image and then a ghost contour, a, a ghost after image um, done by utilizing blind contour of the same image on top of your contour line drawing. And then that will almost serve as kind of like a paint by number. Then we'll apply color to the different shapes that you've created by utilizing the contour and then the blind contour on top of it. And the only rules there are no colors can appear adjacent to each other. So you have to really think about planning where the colors are going, what your color palette is going to be. It can be anything um, and the placement of those colors. In part one, color, shape, and texture, we will use a variety of shape, color, and textures to recreate a source image. We will only be relying on the shape, the color, and the textures of the papers that you are using to recreate an image from source material. Find an image with interesting shapes positive and negative, organic, bimorphic, geometric, curvilinear, or rectilinear that you can use to recreate using a variety of papers that represent a spectrum of colors and textures. Remember, you're recreating this image only using the primary shapes that you see in the image itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with color and shape. And so I found an image here in an old um, National Geographic. That's gonna be my base image. And remember for this, you really wanna focus on an image that has interesting shapes that you will be able to replicate in the different papers or textures that um, you have to work with. So I picked this because I think there's a lot of really interesting shapes, a lot of really cool relationships between the shapes that you can create. You know, we have a few different geometric shapes back here. We have a more organic shape in the figure. There's some really interesting shapes in the figure's clothing that we can use, the hair, the face. So this is the reference image that I'm gonna go with. And this image is actually going to um, stay the way it is. I'm not going to cut into this image. It will be my reference image. now. If you have access to a copier, you could copy this image, um, use one as your reference, one as your working image. But since I don't have access to a copier, I'm going to use tracing paper to trace over the particular shapes 
in the image that I want to replicate. And I have a variety of papers, um, construction paper. I have some, um, some other paper with different colors and textures on it. Um, this is just kind of scrapbook paper that you could find um, at Fred Meyers um, off Amazon. Just lots of lovely different colors and shapes. And then again, I have different solid colors in some construction paper. I have some other colors. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and start tracing the different shapes that I see. And I might do a couple um, so that, you know, if I get a little bit more details in the different shapes I want to use, I will have a couple different kind of um, keys that I can cut out from. So I'm gonna set that aside and place my tracing paper here and just look at the various shapes. I also have some vellum. I'm gonna see which is the most transparent. If you have a light board, those come in very handy right now. I think I can actually see a little bit more with my vellum. Um, they're about the same. I might stick with my vellum and we'll see how that goes. All right, so now I'm just gonna start tracing my shapes. And remember, with this, you're just looking for shape and form, so we're not going to get too specific with lettering or any specific details. We're really thinking about overall shape and form. So I just keep checking my reference, make sure some of these transfer images are a little bit light. So I want to make sure I'm getting the best replication. my basic shapes in the image identified that I want to replicate. Let me just go through and see if there's any other interesting shapes that I missed. I'm pulling up some of the vellum or tracing paper because it's a little bit light and I don't have a light box and I want to make sure I capture any of the interesting shapes that I see. There's a few more I missed. All right, so I think this will be my kind of tracing map. Um, and I'm going to place this over the different papers that I have and start to cut out. And you can use an X-Acto blade for this, or you can use scissors. Um, I'm gonna set my uh, reference image aside um, and start uh, piecing together the different um, images that I want. And you'll see there's quite a few shapes here. Um, you could um, pick a more simple, a simpler um, idea, or you can do something a little bit more detailed. It's really gonna be up to you. So I'm gonna start to see, look through my, um, uh, papers here and just start pulling out some that I think might be fun and interesting that give a few different textures. I also want to think about 
color relationships and um, color balance. Um, so really, I want you to think about lots of different aspects of color as you start to move into this um, exercise. Again, so I'm just pulling out the different color options that I have and I will start um, cutting out my shapes. And I'm going to take my shapes as I cut them out and I am just going to place them in the different areas on my reference where they go just so I don't lose track of them. And some, you know, I might have to go in and make further shapes like this um, BP sign here. So um, I'm gonna cut these out as I go and place them on the reference where I think they should fit. Got a phone, it 
beeps makes me know I'm not alone. I got a phone, it beeps makes me know I'm not alone. Wherever I end up, I sleep like a stone. Yeah, I got a phone, it beeps makes me know I'm not alone. My head, my shoulders, knees and toes. My head, my shoulders, knees and toes. My head, my shoulders, knees and toes. They're running everywhere in fancy room. Okay, so once you have all your pieces in place, your last step would be to adhere it down to the page, either using glue stick or using uh, rubber cement. Um, and you wanna make sure you have the placement of everything as exact as you can. And if you need to make some changes and edits, like I will have to here, um, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So, um, once you have it adhered, you're done. And just make sure you have your reference image um, alongside your final documentation. For part two, color and line, we will be using contour line, color media, and shape to interpret a source image. You will use two forms of contour, contour line and blind contour to draw the outline and hard lines you see in your source image. You will then go back in with color media of your choice to color each section separately, making sure that the same color is not used in areas adjacent to it. Think about the colors you are using for each particular shape created by the overlapping and layering of lines. Use your specific colors to not only define the shape, but also to provide volume to the form. We're gonna do this with a reference image. So whatever image you found, um, you're gonna do a contour line drawing of that image, and then you're gonna do a blind contour over it. Use that as your composition to add color. You can use a marker, colored pencil, crayon, um, in whatever color scheme. The only rules are that the colors cannot be, same color cannot be adjacent um, in the composition. So my reference is a humpback whale. That is gonna be my contour subject. And then we'll do a simple contour line drawing first, do a blind contour over, and then I will go ahead and add the color. Okay, there is my contour drawing of a humpback whale from reference. I'm gonna go over it with pen. Um, 
just to give it a little bit more definition before I do my line contour over it. Did you ever see? Okay, so there is my humpback whale from reference. Um, and now I'm gonna go over it um, with a blind contour. So you'll have the contour line drawing and then you'll have the ghost image. And again, I'm gonna go over it with pencil and then I will darken it with pen. And so just like we did the blind contour study before, you do not look at your paper, you only look at your reference and um, just do it until you feel like you have the whole um, uh, design traced. Again, do not look at your paper, look only at your reference. So I'm gonna scoot this kind of out of my sight and look at this while I do the contour over, uh, the ghost contour, blind contour over um, the contour line drawing I just did. And I'm not going to time myself. I'm just going to go until I feel like I've um, finished the line. And again, once you put your pencil down, don't lift it back up. So continuous line, you know, we're really thinking about how we can use a line to create different sections for our color. Okay, so putting my pencil tip down and starting the blind contour now. Okay, so there's my blind contour with the um, uh, contour on top of it. So I'm gonna go in with a darker uh, grade pen um, and I'm gonna trace over my blind contour. So there I have the contour and I have the ghost image. And I'm gonna see if I'm happy with that or if I wanna do another contour on top. I'm looking at the different relationships between the spaces here. And I think what I'm gonna do is go over my original contour line with the, the heavier grade marker as well just to broaden some of those sections and make it a little bit easier when we go to apply the color. Okay, so there we have it. Um, thicker lines, so it's a little bit easier to see. And now we're gonna apply the color. And remember, use lots of colors, use a color palette, um, use a specific color scheme. If you'd like triadic, um, monochromatic, etc. cetera. Um, and just remember no adjacent 
color. So if there's blue in one area adjacent to the next, there won't be blue. So that'll be a little bit challenging in some of the different areas. Um, but uh, just go with it and um, see what comes. And I'm gonna use watercolor pencil and watercolor crayon uh, for this. I have two different kinds. I have um, some watercolor pencils um, that I use. Um, and then I have um, some aqua color watercolor crayons. So I'm gonna use um, some of those for this. And again, you can use any color medium that you like. But seeing we it's a reminder Don't wear no suits We're talking t-shirts See how it glides Makes women shiver uh -oh. Okay, so I rushed a little bit at the end there, but now we have the contour of the um, object with um, uh, the blind contour ghost image on top and color um, blocked out with the shapes that were created by the different um, contour drawings, the blind contour and the actual contour. So you can go in and fill out the background if your image has a background, or you can leave it just basically um, uh, uh, the contour line of the main image. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Colors blind, oh dopamine, and she looked so good when they were last seen. I ooh.